Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum viewers. I am going to start this channel to share the clinical knowledge with the undergraduates as well as postgraduates. In this clinical examination, first of all is the general physical examination. And in the general physical examination, there are four things included in the vitals, which are pulse, blood pressure, temperature, and the respiratory rate. You can quickly take the respiratory rate in a patient just in few seconds. And the important way is to concentrate on the chest of the patient and to observe the chest that it's moving with the respiration. It's going up, coming up and then going down. And you can start from anywhere when it is at the top, then it goes down and comes back. This is one respiratory cycle. And how do you count it? You say 1001 in your mind. That will take at least one second. So you just count 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004. So I could hardly say it for three and a half times. So roughly this is approximately 16 or 70 respiratory rate. This is how we can take it quickly by just considering the one respiratory cycle. When you have taken the respiratory rate quickly, take the temperature. If you take it in the axilla, then you will have to add one degree to bring it to the uh, reading of the sublingual or the oral temperature. So oral temperature is one Fahrenheit higher compared to the axilla and the rectal temperature is again one degree higher to the oral temperature. When you take the blood pressure, the cuff should be one inch above the cubital fossa from here up to here. The two of the tubings should be over the brachial artery. So both the tubing should be over here. Then you need to feel the this brachial artery, place the stat over it, and then arm should be relaxed. Raise the mercury column. You may go to 180 or 200 millimeter, gradually lower it, where you listen the first crowd cough sound. That will be the systolic blood pressure. Gradually lower it down but no more than one to two millimeters per second. And where the sounds disappear, that will be the diastolic blood pressure. Then another important thing for the blood pressure is that you need to take the blood pressure in the standing position to see whether there is a postural hypotension or not. If there is a difference of 20 by 10, either 20 systolic or 10 diastolic, it will be considered as postural hypotension. Then we come to the pulse. Now the examination of the pulse is very important. In the general physical examination, if we just take the pulse and its rhythm, probably that will suffice at the level of the undergraduate. But as a postgraduate, you need to observe many things when you take the pulse. First of all, which arteries can be palpated and how? When you start taking the pulse, first of all, the radial artery. Now for that, the hand should be slightly pronated and flexed at the wrist joint. Place your three fingers over the radial artery and feel the pulse. Second is you can note the brachial artery and for that you need the thumb. Place the thumb on medially just above the cubital fossa. Press it and feel the this brachial artery. To feel the axillary artery 
you need to push your fingers into the axilla press against the humerus and then you can feel the axillary artery to feel the carotid artery you need to place the thumb just below the ankle of the mandible like this and feel the artery similarly on the other side then comes the femoral artery for the femoral artery you have to be a bit cautious because the patient might be of the opposite sex so that will create the embarrassment and the best way to avoid that embarrassment is place your hand over the greater to canter or the hip joint bring your thumb medially below the inguinal ligament and press it and where you feel the artery then you can place your fingers over it to feel the popliteal artery you have to flex the knee half flexed place your fingers like this deep into the popliteal fossa and press it against the femur like this and then feel the popliteal artery for the dorsal spedus and posterior tibial artery you place your three fingers in the first web space and bring them proximally like this and then feel the dorsal spedus artery it dips into the first web space so it will not be palpable over here to feel the posterior tibial artery the best point is between the medial malleolus and the heel midway between the two over here place your three fingers and feel the posterior tibial artery so these are the different arteries which you can feel in the body now what to see while you are taking the pulse one is the rate you just count the rate in 30 seconds or 15 seconds and convert it to per minute apart from the rate there are few other things as well the related to the rate there are few findings it may be the rate may be regular or irregular regular when beat to beat interval is constant but when it is constantly varying then it will be irregularly irregular pulse and whenever you find the irregularly irregular pulse then you immediately need to take the heart rate and the difference between this heart rate and the pulse rate is the pulse deficit another thing in the uh, rate is that this rate may change with the respiration at the end of the inspiration if it becomes faster and the slower in the expiration this is called sinus arrhythmia then you need to note down the volume of the pulse the volume of the pulse is the force with which you feel the pulse what is or what is normal normal is you can say which you see in majority of the patients and the force with which you feel it that is called the average normal pulse this may be a low volume or a high volume pulse if it is a low volume pulse you need to think about the conditions of the low volume pulse then if you find the high volume pulse look for the collapsing pulse now what is a collapsing pulse to demonstrate it you need to place the distal part of your palm this part over the radial artery like this grasp the wrist and tighten your grip gradually till you are able to feel the pulse with your palm and when you are able to feel the pulse 
the that grip should be maintained and then the arm should be made vertical and the elbow supported if the pulse volume increases on becoming vertical and then again it decreases when you bring it down this is called the collapsing pulse now collapsing pulse is again of you can say of two types one is the minimal collapse and the other one is the, and the second is the collapsing pulse minimal collapse is when the pulse pressure is normal now what is the pulse pressure the difference between the systolic and the diastolic blood pressure is the pulse pressure if the pulse pressure is wide the definition of the wide is when the pulse pressure is either equal to or more than the diastolic blood pressure then it will be called wide pulse pressure if the pulse pressure is wide this is called the collapsing pulse but if the pulse pressure is not wide then this will be called minimal collapse which you can see in many of the conditions like fever anemia av fistulas and many other conditions so in any hyperdynamic circulation you can have the minimal collapse